welcome to this new installment of Sample Rolls. Today's film is Kodak Ultracolor 400 in medium format from a batch that expired in 2008. This is a discontinued film stock and should not be confused with Kodak Ultramax. Kodak's datasheet says this family of color negative films deliver an extra punch of colors featuring deep saturated colors without sacrificing skin tones. It contains their color precision technology as well as advanced T-grain emulsion. Back then, it was offered in 400 speed as well as 100. The images I'll be sharing are from 4 rolls out of a 5 pack that my uncle found in a drawer in his flat. The first 3 rolls are some of my first images in medium format which I shot through my grandfather's Yashika A in the fall of 2019. The fourth and last roll has been shot more recently in my RB67 on a weekend away in Dingle, Ireland. All of those rolls were metered at 100 ISO and I think this was a good choice for this one. Alright, let's dig in Lightroom a little bit to see some of my favorite images. I zoom in to see the grain, see how much cleanup the images needed to look the way they looked in the video and all of that. We'll kick things off with the first image of the first roll of Kodak Ultracolor. Uh, this one is from a day hike at Montmigantic in Quebec. This is really nice fall colors. Um, the image is not quite as punchy as I would have imagined from reading the description of the datasheet. Uh, if we take a quick look, um, it was fairly more flat before, not that saturated. But again, this is 14 years expired film, so this is probably some of the side effects. Um, zooming in, we can see there's some nice green and yellows. Um, if we just go a little bit further, uh, we see some nice oranges in the back. Uh, and the sky is kind of a light blue. Uh, we see, you know, not that much grain. Uh, Fairly nice. Uh, this is one of my favorites from the series. Moving on now to another one I really like is this uh, Stars Observatory uh, on the top of the mountain. Uh, it's quite a nice looking building. We've got some side light coming in, a bit of shadows. Uh, you can see here there's still some details, plenty of details in the shadows. Um, the side that's really bright up is quite nice, pure white look. Got this soft blue again maybe a bit of a purple cast uh in the blues but overall fairly nice maybe a bit of a slow shutter speed here uh, here we can see my first attempt at night photography uh, on film where i did not factor anything for reciprocity i did not even know that was a thing here we can see some pretty wild uh color shifting uh, Kind of a cool look, uh, probably not for everything, but yeah, you can see uh, some kind of strange color shifting. It looks like there's some weird stains or something on some of the images, uh, like here. Uh, we'll see some more later, uh, but yeah, this is probably not one of my favorites, but still something to look at. Uh, we can see, yeah, for example, other images, there's just not that much information. Uh, here, same again, kind of night long exposure. Uh, we see those sort of stains again, uh, but yeah, nothing special here. And we finished that roll uh, with a picture on a corner of a street uh, in Montreal. Here, it's quite high contrast scene. Um, you can see if we just zoom in. Um, there's just not that much here. The sky is quite bright, uh, the shadows here get muddy real quick, uh, you know, we don't see that much information there, it's kind of tough to see uh, around where that van is and above, like, there's tree trunks here, it's kind of, yeah, difficult to see, uh, so not that much information retained, but again, it's kind of high contrast scene, an expired film. If we move on to the other roles, uh, here, this image I shot at my grandmother's place. Uh, there's a bit of a color cast uh, and some pretty heavy vignetting. I don't really remember what type of lighting this was on, uh, but there's big windows on the left side here. So I think it is fairly normal to, to have shadows in that area here. 
but probably not so much on that side. Um, and we can see here the color stains. Um, not sure if that's the right term again, but there's a bit of a a bit of them uh, all around the frame. That being said, I think I really like still the orange and the reds from the lamp uh, on the flower as well. Quite a nice dark red. Um, and we can see even the fruits here, uh, some nice red and oranges. We'll see quite a bit again here. This was fall, fall time, so some nice colors. Uh, we'll just take a quick look at the original scan. Some similar thing to what we saw so far. It's, it's a bit flat, slightly desaturated, but uh, as we can see, I added just a bit of tan on saturation, added a bit of clarity to, to bring back some of, some of those uh, details, I guess. Uh, a bit of temperature bump to make it a bit warmer. Uh, didn't really change the contrast at all, but lowering the shadows and the dark points and bringing the lights up kind of have a similar effect, I guess. Uh, but if we just take a look here, some nice red and oranges, uh, nice blue, not really grainy. So this is quite nice. Uh, the photo is nothing special, but in terms of color rendition, I think this is quite nice for expired film. Uh, similar here. Yeah, similar here again, probably not that much to say. Continuing on, uh, this one I think is where the colors really shine. Uh, the orange is very good uh, on that tree, orange and yellows, a uh, bit of green in the foreground, and then some light blue skies. Again, if we take a look, very fine grain. If we compare again, uh, yeah, similar type of adjustments as we've seen before for similar type of flat image. Uh, what I really like about this one, we really have the dark tree trunks and then the bright colored leaves. Uh, you'll notice as well here in the shadows, uh, we kind of lose information pretty quickly. Uh, but besides that, interesting image, I think. Now, third roll here again in October. Um, this one, probably not my best metering I've, had, I've done so far. Uh, we can see here the shadows get muddied and fairly grainy compared to what we've seen so far. Uh, but we do have a nice tree with some bright oranges. Again, could have used a bit more light, but it's not too bad. Now, moving on, images from a different hike in Kaikup Mountain. Uh, this is again in Quebec. Um, these are some of the images I manipulated the most in post. Um, again, type of lighting scenario was very overcast, very foggy in the distance, uh, not that much light to play with. Uh, and if we just take a look here before and after, uh, there's a bit of a change. Uh, there was a bit of a purple blue cast, especially uh, in the sky which I tried to correct, um, but I, looking back at it now, I kind of like the blue, uh, the blue and purple in the skies, but cleans up fairly easily. Uh, looking here again in the shadows, you will notice some more grain, and then there's again these sort of stains all around the picture, and we have the sky here. I here this one picture again, not very saturated, uh, there was not that much to play with, and again this is one that was a bit more heavily edited, uh, it's not really the extent I normally go on my film, but this one was fairly heavy on the purple and blue cast all across the picture, so uh, yeah, I try to counteract that a little bit. Uh, here we have a classic Montreal icon, the, the Olympic Stadium, uh, it's one of nice pictures uh, from those roles, in my opinion. Uh, this is really cool with the top of the stadium in the clouds. Uh, we see again against the white background, uh, the stains look a little bit more uh, present. And then, yes, we have mostly a white picture, uh, but a bit of not that much shadow detail. The reds 
pop nicely as we've seen so far and again this is one where uh, that purple and blue cast really was kind of strong so uh, I added quite a lot of contrast plus plus 65 I also added a fair bit of split toning to cancel out the color cast but yeah overall it cleans up pretty all right with a bit of work now continuing with the more recent images using the RB67 in Dingle County Carry we'll see right away we're definitely noticing there's more colors and the exposures seem to be a lot better these were processed at different lab but I mean it's been five years between this and the other rolls so I like to think my metering probably improved a bit this first frame probably not the easiest to meter with the sun setting behind those super dark clouds and the island here uh, I was trying to to get basically uh, the sun to outline this main island and then these two islands the one on the right and the one on the left um, you can see here that there's not really uh, that many stains but they are still present uh, it's a bit more saturated uh, looking at the original image uh, actually it was a bit dark probably underexposed it a little bit uh, but still got a usable image out of it Continuing here, this was uh, really same location as the shot we've seen before, some side golden light uh, hitting the cliffs. Uh, this would be a pretty good shot, uh, except uh, even on the tripod it was so windy it was shaking a little bit, so that's why uh, when we zoom in it doesn't look that great. Uh, looking at the shadows we see something we've seen before, so quite a lot more grain present in the shadows. Uh, but not so much in the highlights. This one I think is one of my favorites in terms of lighting. Uh, it's really cool to see the dark skies and the, the sun lighting up uh, those fields and those houses. Uh, composition wise probably not my favorite but in terms of lighting and exposure I think this is pretty on point uh, and all you can ask for 14 years old expired film. If we continue now, uh, we have this image here where I actually need to clean it up a bit. There's some residues on the negative, I believe, here and there. Uh, but this has potential to be my favorite from the roll. Um, I really like the lighting and the colors on this one. Um, so I'll probably revisit it when it's a bit cleaned up. We keep going uh, we've seen this one in the intro uh, similar to a previous one on the roll extremely windy conditions so even the rb with all the weight on the tripod was still a bit shaky at something like a 60th of a second so this is on the tripod with the shutter release cable uh, but still yeah a bit of camera shake final one i actually took two exposures of the same i do like this one it feels very ireland to me uh, some good colors, not too much grain, but a bit of grain in the shadows. And those, um, those stains are not very apparent on this one. Overall, I find this is a quite nice looking film, and I haven't really heard or seen too much of it so far on the internet. I, I think colors look good, although a bit desaturated. Uh, grain level is fine and any color cast seem to be cleaning up pretty easily with a bit of split toning uh, in the shadows and highlights. Uh, nothing you really have to, to work too much to, to get a usable image from. And really this is kind of all I'm asking for in an expired film. So this will be all for today's video. Uh, it's slightly longer than usual but I had more images to share so I hope you don't mind too much. Let me know what your thoughts are about the film and if you've ever shot it before. Uh, did you end up getting similar results or you know, did you have any different experience? Uh, as always, thanks for watching. I'll now leave you with a collection of images from each role playing until the end. And I'll see you next time.